Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. I'm so excited about today's guest, Stephen Domingo, CEO and founder of WeDrop. Thank you for joining me today, Stephen. Thank you for having me. What a great opportunity. Yeah, we love having you on here. If no one's noticed, we love Steven. So <laughs> um, just to get an icebreaker going, can you tell me about a crazy experience you've had from weed or a psychedelic and some advice to someone trying it for the first time? Oh, man, I would not want to deter anybody from trying psychedelics because they're great. <laughs> so I won't tell them about a crazy experience, but I do remember one time I ate I took too much acid and um, I was what I would describe as having a mental conference with myself. Oh. <laughs> you can imagine that. <laughs> and uh, I, I turned over, I'm sitting on the kitchen counter and I look to the immediate right and the ground on the tile is just coming out. Like it looks, it's kind of like spilling over and nothing definitive, but it's like ants are coming out of a mound is the best way I could describe yeah. it out of the ground of the tile. That was a, that was a great one. That was the last time I did acid. Yeah, you're like, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> it was a lot. No, it was a lot of fun. Great. I, I probably would do it again. <laughs> I feel like whenever I talk to people about it, I'm like, you have to experience like a bad experience to kind of know the difference between good and bad. Otherwise, you kind of just don't really understand it. And I think yeah. for me, I, I'm very type A. So I like have to be in a good mindset to do it. I have to. I have to be at the point of where I'm going and I have to be just my phone's gone, everything's off to really like have a positive experience because I think we've all had bad ones. And oh, it's, yeah. again, yeah. it's never to deter people from it because it's so like amazing for you. But mm -hmm. um, there's definitely like, you have to know yourself before going into it. Like yeah. I can't do it at night. You just can't. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would definitely suggest that to anyone. I totally agree with you to be in the, in the right headspace so you can fully submerge yourself in the experience. I've also, yeah, been on the flip side of that where I've taken too too many mushrooms or they were just too good, one or the other. And I was not here in reality for probably a solid hour. It's just colors and visuals and stuff. It wasn't too terrifying, but also it was, it, it was a little bit because it feels a sense of loss of control. And so yeah, was, and then if it's your first time, obviously you, you don't really know what to expect. So in general, you're gonna be a little nervous to do it. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, so, you get the butterflies in your stomach. <laughs> you're like, oh, oh shit, oh shit, here it comes, <laughs> like you know. Uh, well, thanks for sharing. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about yourself and what made you want to get um, into the cannabis industry specifically? Yeah, so um, I don't quite often share the, the full scope of the story, but I feel comfortable opening it up here on this uh, show with you. Uh, when I was younger, um, that was just really, we, we grew up really poor. I should start from there, my family. And so it was um, something that me and my cousins all saw a few people in our family, like my aunt and people at my grandmother's house, like my uncle growing plants. And then as we grew up, we soon, we soon realized exactly what that was for. Not only, not only to use it for medicinal purposes and recreational purposes, but also to make money. So mm. that, um, was the the quickest avenue to getting out of poverty in all of our heads and so it was um, strictly transactional and financially based in the beginning uh, and I had a life-changing experience being able to work with a company called Project CBD at the time um, they were the, the biggest company of, of their type but of a cannabis company period in the in the country they were doing a lot of good work and I got to work at a really big farm for the times. Again, this was, uh, oh geez, probably mid 2000s. And they had about an acre, give or take of cultivation there. I was able to work there. And while working there, we got to see some really amazing stuff. Like we donated um, Rick Simpson oil procured from the crops there to a lady that helped cure cervical cancer and That's i'm not awesome. not giving medical advice to anybody or making any medical claims but i we we saw it we saw it happen it, it mm -hmm. happened she had cer cervical cancer she started administering rick simpson oil and she didn't there was nothing in between or or any variables that could have changed from that and we saw or i saw uh, a child 
really curb their their epilepsy that they had um, with CBD and just a, a lot of um, a, a lot of things that could be dubbed as miracles, um, but just from this plant. And that really shifted my perspective from financial gain and just a capitalist mindset to wanting to be able to to help people with this plant, I'll also make a living at the same time, but being able to help people as much as I could with that, it really helped me shift gears being there. It was a great, great experience. I can't say enough good things about it. That's an amazing story. <laughs> it like warms <laughs> my heart. I didn't know any of that. Um, that's kind of why I've just loved and gravitated toward, towards cannabis is because people like yourself and you can just tell there's such, um, there's so much genuine, um, need to help people in the industry that you don't really see in a lot of others. Um, and I've also found that in the cannabis industry, like we're all grinders, like no pun intended, but like we work hard, like I'm talking like 16 hour days and you, you yourself the same, we're all entrepreneurs. And I think that's why certain people in the industry, like have gravitated towards it is because we love to like work for what we love to do. And I always say, you know, what I'm doing is a, it's such a passion project. Like I don't get paid anything to do it. <laughs> I just love doing it so much that, you know, it's worth it if I can get the information out to people that are seeking it. Um, going off of entrepreneurship and financial gains and things like that. Um, this is the main topic I wanted to talk with you about was the other day I saw you post about stimulus checks and really how to invest it. And I know you're a finance guru, so <laughs> I'm juiced to get my stimulus check. So I wanted to get some advice from you and I'm sure the audience would love it on some of the best practices on how to spend your stimulus check on maybe investing instead of just blowing it all at once. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 really hard to to provide guidance in times like this for for allocating resources because I know everybody is so behind the eight ball. Um, I mean, rent forbearance. A lot of people are behind their rents, just wondering how they're gonna um, feed their families. So it's really hard to say to to allocate the funds and into a savings or or a wealth building uh, institution and and forego that those those dire things that are necessary right now but if someone's in the opportunity there's or has the opportunity to to utilize that stimulus check for an investment or a wealth building thing then i would i would highly recommend that and just some of the things especially i know single parents right now are, are struggling immensely and so there's several different ways to to work around it um something is to get out of or I should, definitely not illegally but yeah. <laughs> something to get out of is taxes and um i had to change my perspective on that for instance um and, and there is no wrong answer um, how how did you what's the first thing that pops into your mind when you saw the tabloids talking about amazon paid zero dollars in federal taxes what was the first thought that comes to your mind I hate <laughs> to get political, but I, I was like, ah, Trump. <laughs> I thought about this. <laughs> I was like, these are parallel as I've ever seen them. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not wrong because when I, I, those, that was my reaction as well. It's like these bastards getting away with murder. They have mm -hmm. so much wealth, but that, but that's the thing. They're not actually doing anything wrong, and anybody could, anybody could do it. You and I can do it. We just mm -hmm. don't. We were never provided the tools or the understanding how to do these same exact things for ourselves, And that was what I was talking about on my story, which was a super surface level uh, understanding of it. I'm by no means a certified CPA, but if you're someone like ourselves who are we're entrepreneurs and we have several different things going, it's, it's pretty easy to form an LLC for, I think it's a hundred bucks, 125 bucks with the secretary of state right now. And if you own your home and most people are now working from home, you can purchase that home with your LLC and write off most, if not all, depending on um, de depending on the an accountant's advice. You can now that's a business expense. So your incomes or your houses are now under that LLC. It's a business expense. You can even do it for rents. You can write off portions of your rents um, for your home from working at home. And the big, the biggest thing right now with with an LLC that single parents could do, mother or father, 
Um, if you're an entrepreneur, you have your own businesses and you form this LLC, you can actually hire your own children. Uh, I think in California, the age is eight to 18 years old and they can be employees for the company and earn uh, almost tax-free up to $20,000 a year. So mm -hmm. it, this is, but it can't, it can't be manipulated to where like the child's doing dishes and stuff. They have to actually yeah. be performing a function of the job. And so through that avenue, $20,000 a year, now that you would normally be spending on your child for whatever the costs are, depending on their age, um, now that's tax, almost tax free and, and also tax deductible for the business. So um, there's several different ways that people can be utilizing um, a minimal amount of resources to get the maximum amount of leverage out of their situation. Do you hear that parents? I hope you heard that because that is incredible. And that's that's just one of the things. And that's why I'd like to get on these and have open conversations because a lot of this information that you like learn, sometimes you can find it online, but the language around it and surrounding it is so difficult to understand that the average person like myself, I, I don't know what any of it means. Like I wouldn't have known any of that unless you had explained it to me in the way that you just did because it actually makes sense that way. And, you know, you go through all of this like legislative um, jargon and no one really can understand what it means. So that's all super helpful. Is there, say, I want to set aside a hundred bucks of my stimulus because I need the 500 other for, to help with rent or something along those lines, but I'd really like to invest the hundred dollars that I have set aside. What would be your best advice for moving forward with that hundred dollars to maybe make the most of it over time? Hmm. Well, if, if you're a homeowner and you, and you work for a home or for instance, um, we had spoke briefly about um, real estate investments and if you know you're looking into buying a duplex or a triplex as an investment income I um, mean you're already in that process of doing that or you already own an investment property or your own property that that hundred bucks you could form an LLC um, and and do all of the aforementioned things uh, the laundry list of things to now put purchase that home through that LLC now it's becoming an expense instead of uh, a ride, a uh, tax deductible expense to your company, so on and so forth. Um, that could it, it depends on your situation. If you have a hundred bucks that you just can put away and you want it to be uh, passive earning income like that, buy a couple of stocks in the stock market. There's a lot of great options right now. Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin, is, Bitcoin is crazy. It's an anomaly. It's like, <laughs> it's like Tesla. Tesla is scary. It just doesn't stop going up. <laughs> no, totally. It's funny because I was talking with Steven the other day and I was telling him I used to talk so much shit on people that did Bitcoin, like so much. <laughs> and now I'm just like hitting myself in the head for it. I'm like, oh, they were right. <laughs> like, who am I? You know? And it's, What's cool about Bitcoin is you can buy a percentage of the stock. So if you have, say, $100, you, you can invest $100 and get $100, like a percentage worth of Bitcoin. I mean, yeah. I have I bought in, I think, at 12000 and I, I think it was at like 30% or something, super, super low, and I've tripled my profit from it. So, I mean, if I could give any advice to someone, I'd say get into the Bitcoin game. You know, sorry to everyone that I <laughs> said it wasn't going to do anything, but, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Jokes on me. Bitcoin is a great investment. I think that we're having an, an organic transition to digital currency, um, especially these cryptocurrencies. I can see that being adopted as national currencies in the future, just because there's no potential to overproduce currencies like there is with paper money right now. Just, mm -hmm. I mean, we've all seen the, the memes last year in 2020, money printer go burr with the stimulus checks and yeah. stuff. <laughs> It's reality. We're just printing out endless money. And that's what inflation is. Inflation isn't the cost of goods arising. It's the value of the dollar is going down. And so that makes the cost of goods that much more. Um, so with, with digital currencies, it presents, it doesn't present that, that opportunity. And Bitcoin is a great one. PayPal's buying it up. I think PayPal <laughs> wants to own dominance over the, the Bitcoin space, which is great because PayPal isn't going anywhere. Yeah, I always feel like I got in so late, like just in time, but just a little late. Like, but that's okay. Um, going back to WeDrop, what is um, coming up on the horizon in 2021 for you guys? 
you know, um, we drop had a great run. We <laughs> had a lot of fun with that name and we did a lot of great things and never actually did much operating in the, in the delivery space under we drop it was more just a name and we i did a lot of political work under that name um but this year we have we and i say we because there's a massive team of amazing people i'm probably one of the least valuable players out of everybody but we're building this huge um huge huge statewide network i think the most important and and best, best component of what we're doing is we're building out a really big uh, distribution space to provide um, white labeling opportunity in a house for um, uh, cannabis businesses across the state that either don't have an opportunity at licensing because of local regulations or lack of resources or whatever it is, social equity applicants, we want to create a home for everybody that doesn't have one to help them get a leg up and move out into their own licensing space. So that's something that I'm really going to be focused on this year and really, really proud of. That's awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to hear more as the year goes on with that. Um, I'd love to come check out one of the facilities yeah, near, near me, obviously, that's but um, yeah, I'd love that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. That's all I have on the agenda for today. Of course, you and I could talk forever, but um, right. as, far, <laughs> as far as topics go, I'm all out. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. I, I always love being able to chat with you um, on and off the record. So yeah. this is <laughs> If, um, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for joining me. I know you're busy. Um, do you have any other information you want to give to our viewers or listeners where they can reach you at um, Instagram handles, websites, things like that? Uh, yeah, I'm always on Instagram at Stephen R. Domingo, um, trying to keep up with the news and the latest and greatest, but usually it's boring pictures of me and my dog, but, <laughs> or my girlfriend, so. <laughs> <laughs> but your girlfriend's you pretty so we don't mind <laughs> <laughs> she has a great company coming out this year too it's really great companies super excited and proud of that thing that she's doing as well so i'm excited i'll have to have her on here i'll, I'll yeah. have to be the official launch of anything yes. that happens with you guys okay <laughs> it absolutely. has to be me <laughs> absolutely exclusivity you heard it here folks Yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much again, Stephen. Um, again, I'm going to list all of his information and in all the Instagram posts and online, so you'll be able to find it there as well. Um, I will talk to you soon. Thank you. See ya.